leg.gov. And that gets us, it gets to our assistants and ultimately to us. So if you have questions and um, things like that, um, we also have um, um, email blasts or, or newsletters that we send out. And so I've got one for my campaign, and yes, it is, it is political. However, it's also loaded with information on these things. So if you want to, um, you, can, you can call me and, and, and uh, check in with me, and I'll give you um, information on how you can get on that list if you would like to receive those reports as well. I, I think um, I think we, everything has been mentioned. Um, like you said, follow um, everybody um, can follow the work at the when we are in, we when we are in session. But as soon as we start meeting the task force, we will be sending out Twitter um, and Facebook messages so that people know. And we we're hoping to meet in the communities like here in Tucson and in Flagstaff and other communities so that. Um, we can hear from the from from you from the public um, as we work on on learning more and 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 you know making it more aware for everybody to to know what's happening what we're doing and at the legislature um, you can come and testify like when uh, you know when Nona said you can come to um, to the in come and listen um, to when we debate these bills and also um, in committees, and you can sign up for the request to speak um, so that you can, from wherever you are, you can be involved and put, you know, give your testimony on, on, on that. And we, 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 you know, like Victoria said, I think, and Winona, we pretty much do listen and, and listen to and read emails and return phone calls and, and emails because um, our constituents are the most important people that, that we have and that we can learn from. Thank you. Hi, I'm from the Baspayaki community. I'm a journalist. I'm just wondering, you know, what more can be done to protect women before they end up missing and murdered? You know, for example, if a woman's trying to escape abuse, you know, a lot of times these justice systems, justice systems are, you know, punishing them for leaving. So what more can be done to prevent it, for, 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 to prevent women from becoming, you know, missing or murdered? Like, how can we protect women while they're still alive? Uh, thank you for the question. I think it's very important that we have, um, uh, that we work with, with women and, and hear you. I know uh, my mom, uh, my my dad abused my mom when we when we were kids, and the laws at that times were not protective of women, and we are still struggling with that. They've become better, but certainly, um, you know, um, you know, I think Victoria in working in that field can express a little bit more. But what I would like to say is that we need to to work on that and to educate, and maybe do it through legislation on. On you know, and on how how do we how do we work with you know? I mean, look at what's happening with what's who's gonna who are becoming our judges and and who are our prosecutors, and we need to to really work and and be mindful as citizens as as to who we elect as prosecutors, county prosecutors, state prosecutors, and and also help us when we're at the legislature on you know, putting out the information to the governor, you know, you need to, you know, have a, a judicial system that is diversified and, and helpful to all. But um, thank you for the question. I, I just wanted to mention that um, I did work as a domestic violence counselor and as a substance abuse counselor. In fact, I started the Native Ways program at The Haven. Um, which is a program for indigenous women in residential treatment centers. And Hi. under just about every single case of substance abuse was a story of trauma. So this is something that 
has been going on for centuries. It's been going on probably since even before the invasion. But the way that women are held in this society is, is not good, and it's getting worse. So if you're not running for office, I encourage you to do so. I encourage you all to think about it if it's ever been a thought. And, or, and, and if you want to make a change, then help somebody else do it because that's the only way we're gonna stand up and make this change because when, when the people who are in charge right now remain in charge, things get worse, they don't get better. And I want to protect your daughter. I want to protect everybody's little girls and little boys and their mothers and their sisters and their grandmothers and their daughters and their aunties from this kind of stuff happening because I've heard too many stories. It's time to make it stop. I don't have any quick, easy answer for you. There's no 10 seconds out by sound bite for you, but together we can do this. We have to do it. <clears throat> I'll just add that I, I think um, I think we the conversation um, needs to involve men more. Um, that's if you look at the composition of the audience. Um, you know, there are men of substance and character um, who can uh, start talking to boys, um, having conversations uh, with men about violence that's committed against women. Um, it's it's not something we're talking enough about. Um, if you look at the, uh, the data and the information under, underlying some of our school shootings and um, the violence that's happening in, in, in domestic violence cases, um, there's, there's connections. We're, we're, we're able to make these connections. We can start unpacking these cases um, and we can start doing a lot more. Um, but I think that's part of the conversation that um, needs to be highlighted going forward. I'll, I'll just add a policy perspective to this. You know, a lot of the programs that are set up, and you know, certainly the ones that have been mentioned, the funding's being cut. You know, these programs are going away. They're not made, um, they're not priority programs by the state. And again, you know, this goes back to um, the folks that we elect and the folks that we put in charge who don't make these issues and certainly the funding that goes with them um, a priority. And so, again, it's, you know, a lot of it, too, is just finding ways to get the funding back um, for these services, these programs, and making sure that the people we like make it a priority. Hold on, Mana, if I can just real quickly add, uh, and this is something, a little plug that we have um, coming up uh, for Indigenous Botswana. We have a, a Call to Men event, which speaks directly what um, Mr. Albino was talking about, about having the, you know, the men come together and discuss these issues about masculine male, um, toxic mas masculine, masculinity. So those are some of the things that we're gonna be having next weekend, actually. So if you look up on our Facebook page, you can check it out and, and the event's coming up. So just wanted to mention that. Good afternoon. My name is Marilyn Lujan Atsidi, and I'm Navajo in Taos Pueblo, and I'm a former educator at the high school of K-12 and at the high school level. So I've dealt with a lot of young high school girls, and I appreciate as political people what you are doing, and I appreciate hearing that in January, you may be able to get legislation done. We can't wait that long. I appreciate the fatherhood conferences, but the family need to go to that together. The father, the mother, the kids, you need to talk about each of their responsibility and their role as a family member. We need to talk to our young kids, like, like my grandson here. We have to teach them to respect the woman. We don't respect women anymore. Everybody. We have to, there's roles we all play. And I know my children, mom, you're outspoken. But as a grandmother, that's exactly my role. It's my role. 
I want to know what can be done now. What can be done this week, next week? What kind of block watches can be done in communities? What kind of workshops can be done in our high schools? What kind of crisis center can be set up in small communities? My children are athletes, they run. I know plenty of Native American women run the back roads, half marathon, marathon. They're running by themselves. And then there's police officers on the Navajo reservation 50 miles away. So I, I appreciate all of you that are there, but we need to go back to our own communities, whether it's TO or anywhere, and ask our community officials, what are you gonna do in this community? All the things I've heard are long-term. Yes, we do need the legislation. Yes, we need people to run. But every time I go visit my brother in Fruitland, New Mexico, I drive by Ashland Mike's Memorial. And it's, it's sad. It's sad, but it's a reminder to me that we're all involved in this. And I thank a lot of you non-Indians that are here because we need you too. You are our teachers, you are people that live with us. And the last thing I wanna say is uh, whatever we can do, we're, you know, we're all here, we're all willing to help. But it's scary that Missing, murdered indigenous women is happening in the cities and on the reservations. So, um, thank you. What can we do now? We can, we can go back to our home communities and, and try to see, brainstorm. And I'd like to ask you individually what your recommendations are in terms of what do we do this month? What do we do? Who can we contact? Who can we call? I think for the month, if, if I was to, um, you know, any tribal community or communities, even all the communities, we should all, it should be a state. It shouldn't be this community. I think what should happen is educators like yourself, we should start having teen dating right now yesterday that should be part of the curriculum in schools because it starts there as somebody said the vicious cycle uh, young boys hitting on young girls at an earlier age and then it becomes something and that's what should happen now is curriculum um, you know tribes are sovereign they don't have to wait to get an answer tribes are sovereign to start now with getting your teams of your departments and your tribes together to come educate whether it's your crime victim services along with your police, law enforcement, that has to start there now. That, we shouldn't wait for any legislator. It should, it should already be happening for team dating to stop stalking, to also help them about um, Facebook and bullying on Facebook because that's where it starts as well. Um, and it can explode or uh, have a domino effect on anybody that is trying, any young adolescent going into. It starts at probably five, fifth grade, maybe even younger when they start to grow. So to me, that's what tribal, all communities should be doing. Go back and talk to your education board and ask where's this curriculum so we can start that now. So for me, that would be first and then second. This other stuff will fall in, in place because as these bills start to pass, we'll start to see um, a domino effect of everybody working together. And Arizona should take that lead because you have a whole slew of experts up here that are doing that. I haven't seen any other state have a panel of this magnitude with fire, fire, uh, house power to authority power to move forward. So thank you for that question. Thank you very much for that comment. I, I absolutely agree with you. And and you know, this is. This conversation is certainly part of a whole larger conversation about all forms of violence, right? I mean, this is something that, um, again, is epidemic for our communities. Um, 
and it's a conversation that we do really need to have um, within our own tribal communities and where we're from and our own families and uh, you know just speaking directly to tribal members um, and uh, folks who come from tribal communities we do we need to have a conversation with each other we need to have a conversation with our own family our own relatives we need to talk about this I know it's hard it's incredibly incredibly difficult to to talk about you know there's not only historical trauma but when you, when we get together as tribal people we always ask the first question how many of you in here are victims and you will see like just about everybody in the room raise their hand I mean that's how epidemic this problem is how systematic it is and I will tell you you know a big reason why I'm heavily involved or jumped on this issue is because I too am a victim you know I uh, I actually was sexually assaulted literally one month after I was elected to office for someone like me to become a statistic should be earth-shattering to everybody we literally on this panel live our lives looking over our shoulder that's how serious of a problem this is and i know for me i go back and I'm, I'm starting to have those conversations with my family it's hard to talk i come from a family of brothers to say look i'm a victim i can't go out alone anymore we, we never have right so i mean it's i know for me that's how i've started i've started having conversations with the men in my family and and once they realize that wow my sister my my daughter my grandchild is a victim it, it really hits home for them too and so I you know I know that for the again for those of us who are members of tribal communities uh, we got to find ways to start having these conversations I know they're tough they're traumatic they're most you know very heavily charged but we got to figure out ways to start talking to each other about it There are some practical things that we can all do. Um, supporting the legislation we've talked about, um, you can certainly call Congressman uh, Gallego's office um, on the, the vow reauthorization bill, find out where that's at, uh, write a letter of support, um, write a letter of, for our Congress folks that haven't co-sponsored this bill, um, ask them to push it through um, there's companion legislation in the Senate, so you can call Senator McSally. Um, Senator Sinema is actually um, co-sponsoring it on the Senate side. Um, all of our, I think, Democratic congressmen are co-sponsors, O'Halloran, um, Kirkpatrick, um, um, Congressman Grijalva is the chair of the House Natural Resources Committee. So um, those bills are sitting um, in committee waiting for hearings and so it's a good time for the public to call write an email um, to each of these offices um, so that we can get some action or at least find out um, if they can schedule it um, any kind of uh, any kind of volunteering you can do with the Tucson Indian Center um, holding meetings um, starting Facebook groups um, starting conversations with your co-workers um, you can even do things like um, um, you know, supporting individual, indivisible Tohono here um, in their efforts. Um, you, can, you can meet locally. Um, there's a lot of things you can do, even if you're not on your reservation or even if you're not a member of the tribe. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do collectively uh, to push this forward. I think a lot of people don't realize that a huge number, more than 50%, probably more than 50%, of native people do not live on a reservation. Uh, we live in urban areas. And this problem is in multi-jurisdictions. It makes it very complicated. But as, as Winona and I were first talking about it, when she brought this, this legislation to me and said, will you carry this forward? I, I kind of wanted to say no because 
what's another dam so study committee? Well, we're studying and gathering the facts and the numbers, more women, more girls are going to disappear. They're going to go missing. They're going to be murdered. They're going to be tortured. They're going to be traumatized. Why can't we start today doing something about that? But I can't tell you how hard it was just to get this bill through. <laughs> it was, it was really, I mean, they didn't even want to hear it in the Senate. So fortunately we had, here's how we did it. We had a mirror bill. We had one in the House and one in the Senate, same bill. And we knew that one might get killed and the other might get some wind behind it. And that's exactly what happened. Mine got killed in the Senate. So Jennifer Germain took it in the House and it picked up speed and it passed unanimously in both the House and the Senate. People are behind us. People want this to happen. And we're gonna fight together. But as, as Marilyn was saying, Marilyn Antissi, where are you? There you are. Um, as, as she was saying, we need to start now in our communities. Do what we can, wherever our community is, whether it's, it's, it's in, in central Tucson or, or Oro Valley or Tohono O'odham Reservation. We need, to, we need to really be looking at what we're doing and, and start there, start at home. All politics is local. And unfortunately, this has become a political issue. But I think the solutions can be partly political. But we have to do a lot from our communities, from home. And I, I think what you said was absolutely right on, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you for the statement. Um, all I wanted to echo is that we do need to start at home. And so um, talking to um, you know, our children, or, or my grandchildren, my grandsons, and especially, but um, people have to invite each other to these uh, workshops and these learning experiences because I've attended these, um, you know, and there's very little people that are going to them. So we need to invite people to go with us, and and then at the next one to take ten more, and because it's we need to we we really need to work at at really getting people the information and at the being aware and and pass on the, the word. Thank you. Excuse me, um, real quick. I just wanna make a real quick comment. My name's Julia Chavez. I am Tanata and Pasco Yaki. And I really wanna thank the panel today because this is something like we all have said is a topic of conversation that needs to be brought up. One of the things I wanted to mention, though, is that we really need to work within our tribal communities and our tribal agencies to protect our tribal members and employees. And I say that because as a, also as a survivor of domestic violence, as a young girl straight out of college, um, my ex-husband was mean and hurtful and did unspeakable things to me. And I tried to get help, I tried to reach out to my employer, and I got called by the tribal prosecutor because of his position and said, if you do this, we're gonna file this against you. And scared me. I could have lost my job, I could have lost my child, I could have lost everything. And at the time I didn't know, I didn't know how to combat that. And so I didn't press charges, he kept his job, everything moved forward. But those are the kinds of things that are happening too within our tribal communities and to our people. And if I, know, if I had known now what I knew, if I had known then what I know now, there would have been hell to pay <laughs> because I would have known what to do. I would have known who to talk to and that was within our own tribal community. So my question would be, what can we do with our tribes themselves to protect and know that there isn't going to be that backlash, that, um, that they're not protecting their own almost. I, I felt like I was in the wrong and, and I left, I left. And things are better today, they're much better today. Um, but now part of my, my job is working to make sure that people are safe and they're getting the help that they need. 
uh, not necessarily from domestic violence or any kind of violence, but uh, mental and physical health needs met and making sure that we can get the right resources out to them. So um, I really just want to encourage everyone to, like the, the, the Nana over here said, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm grateful for what she said because yes, what do we do now? What do we do now? There's too, too much time has gone by, too many lives have been lost, too many people are still staying quiet because they're afraid to lose their jobs, to lose their families, to lose everything. And for some people that are still living on the reservations, they have nowhere else to go. Where else can I go? What, what else can I do? Who else can I talk to? So I just, like I said, wanted to bring that to the forefront because not only does it start at home, but it starts you know, within our tribal systems itself. And what can the tribes do to support some of these efforts that are going forward at the state and national levels too? And are we, are we really behind that? Are we really pushing forward for that? So again, I just wanted to bring that to the forefront and make sure that, you know, not only are we working at these state and, and federal levels, but also that at home, you know, the, those bottom lines where, where it's in our homes, in our communities, at our work sites, those types of places. Thank you. Thank you um, for your statement. I think it's very important for, thank you for for really addressing this here. I think it's important for all of us to know, I think um, talking to your to your um, local tribal council, um, uh, you know, they, they have elections too, and they need to really hear what's happening in, in, in you know, in their tribes, in, in our tribes, uh, with employees and, and staff people, and we need to make them push for for better um, policies and practices um, at um, in in our tribal um, offices because I think it's important and you know I think we need to um, you know start you know talking to other women and other people um, and 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 to have the discussion because it is happening and and you're absolutely right but we need to also hold our tribal people accountable to to what's happening and do better better by us thank you and uh, thank you so much um for all the questions and i do apologize uh we are we're unable to take any more questions at this time um uh, but really want to thank you panelists for you know everything that you provided this afternoon i as I was listening, I, I realized why I got nervous earlier because the subject is so um, sensitive and it's really tough. Even when I mentioned that, it gives me chills in my body. Um, so I, I do hope that we all have this discussion, continue to have this discussion. As I said in the beginning, thank you so much for allowing us to have this, to, to begin these, these, um, this conversation. Um, but I do, don't want to take too much time. I want to pass it on to Elaine. Elaine has been our champion on the, these issues and really um, sharing her story and, and letting us know and you know bringing us together and, and ensuring that we can do something about it and a call to men is something that we've been working towards in addressing that getting our young boys and uh, men together to address these issues because it's it's us as men you know, and I say us because when we need those allies we need we need to hold ourselves accountable so that's why I always include that here you go something real quickly. I'm not sure how many of you are precinct committee people. I'm a precinct committee person in LD9. We have a meeting once